You're listening to the Wedding Biz Network, the voice of the creative entrepreneur. Hey everyone, it's Andy Kushner with The Wedding Biz, a podcast that provides both education and inspiration for those of us in the wedding and event industry. If you missed last week's episode, it was a revisit of my original interview with popular Los Angeles designer and planner, Eddie Zaratzian. It was quite a dynamic interview. And now today's guest is Sarah Russell, editor and founder of Wedding Sparrow, which is a very popular wedding blog with well over 300,000 followers on Instagram alone. Wedding Sparrow is a multi-award winning premier wedding resource and inspirational website for couples all over the world that specializes in featuring film photography and fine art weddings. In the past 10 years, Wedding Sparrow has grown from a tiny one-person blog to a multi-award winning international team of fine art lovers. We talk not only about what Wedding Sparrow is all about, but also how Sarah chooses from submissions and particularly how COVID has affected the wedding industry and what it means for the future of weddings. Enjoy my conversation with Sarah Russell. Hey, Sarah, it is so good to have you on The Wedding Biz. Thanks for doing this from across. uh, We're on other sides of the world. I appreciate you being on the show. I know. Thank you so much for having me. I'm here from the future, technically. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's Oh, that's true. You are because you're in, in England. So what I, I'm curious where your interest in weddings came about. Like, was there anything growing up that hinted at what you would be doing today with Wedding Sparrow? Oh, my goodness. Absolutely nothing at all. And I wish I, always <laughs> I had a much more interesting story behind it. But I fell into this career, this business completely by accident. And I have been loving it ever since. Um, the reason that I got into weddings and uh, what I do now is just purely because I was planning my own wedding at the time. Um, I've been married for almost 10 years. And that planning stage, so maybe 12, 13 years ago, after getting engaged, I was part of that peak of wedding blogs and the online digital era of magazines that came online and I was at the right place at the right time and I forged a niche within that industry that no one else had seemed to pick up on yet. I personally when I was planning my own wedding was interested in the more fine art side of things that being said more along the film photography vein within the wedding industry which is a niche within itself And because I couldn't find a particular platform or magazine that just focused on that, I had to kind of get bits and pieces from everywhere. Instagram was just becoming a popular thing. Pinterest was just becoming a thing. Um, And again, I was an early adopter of certain things. So it massively helped me travel quickly and fast. into the industry at the right time. So yeah, com- completely by accident. Well, if you, when you are, let's say you're at a, a cocktail party or something like that, and you meet someone who doesn't know you and they ask what you do, how, how do you describe that for someone who doesn't have any clue? Oh, gosh, good question. My own mother still doesn't know what I do for a living. <laughs> right. If it's a non-wedding industry related cocktail party, then I would say I sell advertising for a living and I'm self-employed. That's okay. the easiest way to describe what I do. If I'm talking to other wedding industry people, they completely get it. It's a thing. Um, but outside of the wedding industry, it's like I sell advertising. That's what I do. Well, <laughs> even within the wedding industry, if someone hadn't yet heard of Wedding Sparrow, how, how do you, what do you say? So we're an online magazine and we feature real weddings, uh, editorials, inspiration, anything that a bride might be looking for. And with that goes uh, the vendors that they might be looking for for their wedding day too. So we have a curated list of vendors that we recommend, everything from photographers to florists to stationers, you name it, we've got it. Um, And then the other side of my business uh, within the industry itself is more educational side of things. So talking at workshops about social media, branding within our niche within the wedding industry, etc. So it's kind of many strings to my bow. Yeah. Well, and I know, too, that you've been awarded Best Wedding Blog at least four times, maybe five more 
what kind of information and inspiration are you offering the brides that that has gotten this attention for you? That obvi- that or another way of saying it that is distinct that has kind of separated you out from the competition. What do you think that is? Do you know what I I can't really put it down on paper, but I hope that it's the level of curation and the eye for the cohesiveness of what we bring together because I find that as an editor of a magazine or pulling together a thousand other people's work to be your brand, you have to have a really good, strong eye for what you like, um, for what is cohesive and consistent within a brand. Otherwise, because effectively my brand is a thousand other people's work, right? Right, All right. these weddings that we feature. So mm-hmm. to have that underpinning of a certain aesthetic or the medium itself being film photography enables me to pull things together, curate something and put it online so it looks strong. If you like that aesthetic, you know that you can come to something like Wedding Sparrow and see, you know, a similar vein of of quality of work. Um, so I'd like to hope that it's because, you know, it's it's a strong brand and you you know what you're going to get high quality, a little bit more editorial edge of the wedding industry. Well, and you said something earlier while we were talking about uh, the fine art niche. And so is it, I mean, I'm very base, even though I'm in the industry, this this is, I'm kind of a layman when it comes to this. So we were talking about that you're using fine art photography. And so it's the look of it generally that gives it a different vibe to it. Is that what it's about? Yeah, it kind of depends on who you ask within the industry. If you ask some people, they might say it's specifically film uh, photography that it, anything is shot on. Otherwise, if you ask other people in the industry, it would be a certain aesthetic. So it's lighter in color. It's very feminine. It's more portraiture versus more journalistic wedding photography. Um, It's definitely more posed and more portraiture and a bit more kind of um, editorial in its edge. But yeah, there's definitely people in the market that are, no, it's, it's only film photography. That's what fine art means. Right more of a timeless style so we stay away from trends because they just date the images uh filters over things like some digital photographers use presets and filters film photography isn't edited like that it's what your naked eye sees on the day that's what the film photography captures so without that heavy editing it means that it's not going to date your images. There's a reason why we look at, you know, our grandparents' wedding images. They're all shot on film, right, from 100 years ago, 80 years ago. Even our parents, when they got married in the 70s and 80s, it's kind of like, you know, likelihood is it was shot on film. Um, and the photography itself doesn't date. It's now where we've got access to imagery that much more because of the Internet that we have been introduced to so much more styles of photography and styles of editing. And I guess for me, that fine art part and then for Wedding Sparrow is staying away from the heavy editing and and the trend driven part of the wedding industry, just so it lasts longer. And we're hopefully not looking back like we do on the eighties and the, the wedding dress and the style of photography. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, I've had a, a good number of photographers on the show and I've come to understand better the, the film uh, style. What, what about um, in determining who to feature? I mean, other than people who advertise, I believe from what I could see, you're also doing some features. How do you determine who to feature in your blog beyond the advertising? Um, I mean, it's not about who, it's about the quality of work. And for me, it's not an easy answer because I look at so many things in that submission of work. So if somebody sends me a real wedding, then I've got to take the mindset of a bride. Now, today's bride is completely different to 10 years ago bride, Uh, the way she uses the internet for inspiration, uh, the way she kind of flicks through things so quickly everything's really disposable we want to save things that you know as a marketing platform as what wedding sparrow effectively is we are constantly thinking about how do we get those brides fingers on screens we how do we get them to touch an image on instagram to react to it to engage with it 
And when I'm looking at a submission that's sent in, I'm always thinking about, okay, is this going to excite someone? Bearing in mind that when a bride or anyone, when they're looking constantly at wedding inspiration online, um, they, after a short while, they see the same thing over and over again, you know, skinny white girls in white dresses, the same flowers, the same kind of inspiration. So again, how can we make sure that what we're accepting to put online, whether that's on social or on the blog itself, um, how it's going to excite people as well and how it's going to be different and stand out, which is quite difficult these days. I want to be sure you know the wonderful news of our latest show, Stop and Smell the Roses, with acclaimed lifestyle and event design expert, Preston Bailey. Not only will he share the secrets, tools, and technologies behind his extraordinary ability to create a theatrical environment out of any space, you will also discover more about the man behind the magic. Preston will reveal how his focus on personal growth has been the root of his professional success, and you'll have the opportunity for him to answer your questions along the way. Plus, Preston will be inviting onto the show many of the star celebrities he has worked with in the past, so you don't want to miss a single episode. We also have another great show on the Wedding Biz Network, The Business of Being Creative, with host Sean Lowe. Since debuting, his show has really taken off, and he's continuing to bring you the creative business advice he's shared with accomplished industry notables. Be sure to take advantage of Sean's talkback opportunity by recording questions and comments from right there in each episode's show notes. So, if you are a creative who is turning your craft into a business or want to take it to another level, head to theweddingbiznetwork.com and take a listen to Stop and Smell the Roses with Preston Bailey and The Business of Being Creative with Sean Lowe. That's theweddingbiznetwork.com. I know you've been doing this for 10 years, right? You founded the company in 2011, so you've experienced pre-COVID. Yes. (laughs) And then COVID. I mean, how do you feel... COVID has impacted the future of weddings. Do you think that weddings are transitioning or going to be different in any way, shape, or form because of this experience that we've all been through? I mean, it was a crazy time. And then when it started 18 months ago or however long it was, is it was terrifying because we work within a leisure and tourism industry, especially with all the destination weddings that we see. It was so scary to think, oh my gosh, we don't know if this is going to last for a month, a year, 10 years, you know, it could be, could be anything. So that initial level of unknown was very scary within the industry. I didn't know how my business would survive. Um, if it would, all the people that I know within the industry completely came to a grinding halt. Um, now that we're kind of coming on the upward trajectory of coming out of COVID, there's obviously some big changes. There's been some big shifts in the market with um, much fewer destination weddings, with the whole travel restriction part of things. Um, And I think just the size numbers within weddings, it's less about having 300 people there if you don't have to. And it's more about kind of, okay, I'm just going to pick my 30 best friends, family, closest members. Um, And Within the niche of the industry that I work in, that actually marries up really well with that kind of tangible part of the film photography aspect of it, the timelessness of it. It's about actually not how pretty your drinks look on the wedding day, but the marriage itself and how it's about you, what's important, what's going to last forever. Um, So kind of worrying less about the things and the stuff that you have on a wedding day and then more about let's just get married let's do it and let's start our lives together yeah i like what you're saying about this in the sense that uh, i mean look weddings always is about the experience of course H- however because of covid it does seem that there's it, there's a shift in priority um like for example so i i have a band business and music dj's all of that and the weddings we're doing right now were obviously planned or or many of them were planned pre-COVID because then they rescheduled and rescheduled again and they're happening now. And, you know, and so we're seeing large crowds, you know, of the, uh, at least in the States here in the Maryland, Washington, D.C. area 
averaging around 180, 200 people. We've got one of my bands has a wedding coming up this weekend with 480 people. But what I do wonder is post COVID, the planning of weddings, I wonder if people are going to have less amount, like less guests. Because, like you were saying earlier, you know, thinking more about having our close friends, not just our closest relatives, our closest friends, making it smaller, relationships. I've always been important, but they seem even more important now. Like, for example, I'm getting married. It's a second time. I'm very excited. So part of it is because of a second time. But another part of it is we're having 60 people. And we. it's because, yes, again, it's the second time around. But at the same time, it it's more because we just want people we're super close to. You know, I, I so I think what you're saying, I think that's going to be part of it. Yeah, I think people are just, like you said, prioritizing things in a way different in a completely different way because of everything that people have been through even if you haven't experienced covid yourself you know of people that have had you can obviously see what kind of effect it's had on every country on the planet um and just how important you know just i guess just how important things really are or are not in terms of the wedding industry. And I think it made a lot of people, especially those with postponed events and weddings, that they needed to relook at what was important to them about their day itself. And we've seen so many elopements and micro weddings. Um, that was the huge, the biggest part of our submissions last year and then into this year. And we're only now just starting to see much bigger weddings take place. So, yeah, it's it's a complete shift. But in terms of business for us, because it forced 90% of the wedding industry vendors to stay home and not work because they were unable to, it forced them to relook at their own business, re-strategize as to how they could efficiently run a business, whether it be from home now, pivot their business in a way. And myself, I've never been busier than during COVID, ironically. Oh, interesting. How come? What do you mean? We just had so many people go, oh my goodness, my income's come to a grinding halt. I need to learn to how to get in front of an audience. How do I do that? They needed to to scrub up on how to learn about social media, to to marketing, SEO, you name it, they wanted to know about it. And so we hosted weekly Facebook lives of here's how to use Instagram properly. Here's how to use SEO properly, you know, and loads of tutorials, PDFs handed out. And yeah, we just, my turnover for my business more than doubled last year huh. during COVID. Yeah. Which was insane and nothing I did not expect that one bit. If you'd have told me at the beginning of the March when COVID was a thing and lockdown started happening, I'd have said, that's it. See you later. This is my business gone. <laughs> right. I think yeah, a lot of us were so worried about that. Well, you know, it's interesting. I think that it's still yet to be seen the complete effect of this, of the pandemic and, and how it's, you know, the trends that, that are going to come about and how it is going to impact our future. I, I think there's more to see. I don't mean in a negative way. I just think that we're there's going to be more change. It's going to be interesting to watch and see what it is. Yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of people have gotten better at running their small businesses too, because I've found that the small businesses that didn't have cash flow within the business and they were really running on empty already, they just couldn't make it through something like that. So I hope that a lot of small businesses, if anything, learning through this kind of hard 12, 18 months has been like, I need to get better at business. I need to become more profitable so that if something like this does happen, God forbid, in the future, that we can make it through. Yeah, that's a really good point. You know, it's it's interesting when all of this first hit, I mean, I'm obviously, I'm not the only one, but my business partner and I looked really heavily at our expenses. I mean, we had no choice, right? We all had to cut back on, on expenses. And what I'm excited about is our profitability uh, will have gone up. I'm, I mean, because we don't believe in lowering pricing, you know, now that COVID's over, you know, where if anything, we need to increase it. Uh, but just just by taking such a hard look at expenses and keeping them lean, I, you know, that's really the key moving forward. Like as all of us come out of this, 
I mean, I know so many of us are slammed right now because of the weddings that were postponed along with the weddings that we already had, you know, but what's going to happen in 2022? And um, I, I, th- I think there's an opportunity to be more profitable if we can all just keep our expenses down, you know, from this, from what we learned. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, with the wedding industry, weddings will always be there. People will always be getting married. We need strong businesses and strong brands that one, we stand out amongst the competition. And two, we're a strong enough business that, yeah, a couple of bad months won't see us off. That's right. That's right. I think a lot of us are going to try to hang on more uh, months worth or or year if possible of of income, you know, in order to be prepared just in case again. You know, also, I, I noticed on your website, um, you had mentioned that you can't believe how much you've learned about yourself since founding Wedding Sparrow. What did you mean by that? What are some of the things you've learned about yourself through through being an entrepreneur with this business? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> too much. <laughs> yeah, too much. So, how much it's aged me for a start. <laughs> yeah, right. I can relate. Uh, yeah, I've never ran a business up until this one. This is my first and only and hopefully last business. So there's huge learning curves in terms of, you know, taking years to become really profitable. And uh, it was a very much organically grown business. So there was no investment. I just did it on the side of my full time job. It was a hobby. Didn't really think much of it until it was kind of time to make that leap, that jump into two feet in and just hope for the best. (laughs) Right. Um, And then, yeah, that. I did it and it's been going from strength to strength ever since, thankfully. But I think that just so much that I've had to teach myself quickly and um, learn a lot about everything from SEO to social media to algorithms to marketing to what brides are constantly looking for. Um, And I'm always the first person to admit, you know, I I have a degree in business management, but in no way was it a specific marketing degree or um, anything in depth in terms of something like that. But I'm always the first person to admit that, you know, I'm no expert here, but I will share what I've learned along the last 10 years with all of our advertisers and our Facebook group and everything. And I'm like, oh, I've just learned this, that Instagram are going to launch this new algorithm. It's coming up and let's all get ready for this. And, you know, whatever I learn, I'm trying to pass it on because I'm just soaking it all in every day. Hmm. Yeah. Well, and before we go, um, I want to come back to the workshops that you offer. And I noticed that some of the people you've involved are photographers that I featured on the show, including Greg Fink, who was in episode 194, Eric McVeigh, who was in 332. So what are the workshops that you have coming up uh, in the near future that people can be aware of? Well, I um, speak at workshops. um, So we don't organize them for ourselves. uh, But that being said, we're looking to do more online workshops where we can do more like masterclasses of, if you want to know specifically about how to be perfect at Instagram, even if that doesn't exist, perfection in Instagram, then, you know, we'll, we'll host a masterclass on that for, for an hour or two hours, a uh, masterclass on Pinterest, a masterclass on Google SEO, etc. So we're looking to take things online, especially with hopefully over the winter months coming up that there'll be some downtime for people at last. I know everyone's exhausted after this um, wedding season of catching up after COVID postponements. So hopefully a lot of people will have time to kind of sit back and go, right, what do I need to kick off engagement season? Because that's what the holiday season is going to be all about at the end of the year. Everyone's getting engaged. Engagement season, January is the biggest time of year for us in terms of new brides coming to us. So yeah, just trying to get on top of that. But in terms of traveling to amazing places like I have done for the last 10 years, and I've been very lucky, like you say, working with people like Greg and Eric, Uh, previously and flying all over the globe to do that Uh, that's probably not on the books for maybe another couple of years because of restrictions and there's still a lot of tentative people out there with terms of booking flights and investing thousands into something that's in a completely different country just because we don't know what's going to happen but that being said moving it all online 
um, seems to be the way forward. And it's much easier for people. It's much cheaper for people to invest in and you can get more specific. So if you just want to learn about something specific, you can just do that. So yeah, that seems to be the future so far. Yeah. Well, Sarah, I really appreciate the time you've taken to talk with me about this. You're so welcome. Yeah, this has been really fun. So thanks so much. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to my conversation with Sarah Russell. Be sure to check out her website, which is WeddingSparrow.com. Social media handles on Facebook is at Wedding Sparrow Blog, and on Instagram, it's Wedding Sparrow. You can get all of this in the show notes at our website of TheWeddingBiz.com. And if you could think of some good friends, colleagues who you think would benefit from listening to this interview, please forward it to them and give a top rating where you get your podcasts from. It helps people like you find the show and we'll catch you next week on The Wedding Biz. Wedding Biz.